what is the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x divided by x? If you just let x run to 0, then sine of x, as x is getting closer and closer to 0, is also getting closer and closer to 0. So the top is running to 0. But the bottom is also running to 0. So we get something of this form 0 over 0. We call this an indeterminate form. It's not clear what this is going to come out to be. You can't divide by 0. With the 0 0, they cancel. Is it a 1? Is it something else? It's not clear. You might look at the graph of sine of x and of x to try and get some intuition of what's going on here. And when you're close to 0, the graph of y equals x is just a line, is just a line with slope 1. And the line of y equals sine of x, well, that's periodic, but close to 0, it's also a line. And, and if we draw this carefully, this should also have slope 1 very close to 0. When you're close to 0, the slope of, of sine of x should also be 1. How do I know that? Well, I think about the derivative of sine of x, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And so if I figure out what that is at x equals 0, that will just be 1. So, so this slope for both of them right here close to 0 is 1, which suggests that they're both approaching 0 at the same speed, that sine of x is coming into 0 at the same rate that x is coming to 0. So, so this should suggest that this ratio will just be 1. The sine of x is just acting like x, so sine of x over x near 0 comes to, be, comes to be 1. We can make this idea more precise with something called L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule gives us a way of calculating limits when you have scenarios like this, when you have some limit of f of x divided by g of x as x is going to some value a such that f of x and g of x are both going to 0 as your x approaches a. If both the top and bottom are going to 0, L'Hopital's rule is going to give us some way of evaluating this. It says, OK, instead of thinking of being 0 over 0, which is not defined, it's indeterminate, what you can do is you can think about how these graphs behave close to the point A. So let's say our point A is right here, and we have that both graphs are approaching 0. So, so one might be approaching 0 like this. I'll call this the graph of f of x. And perhaps the other one is, is approaching 0 like this g of x. Now we can't plug in A because we get 0 over 0. But you can think about some close, really close to A. Just A plus a little bit. So just go a little bit to the right. So, so I'm just going to call that some, some little change in x there, some little delta x. Then we can ask, how quickly are both of these approaching the A? In particular, how far off is this from 0? How high is g of x when you're delta x over? Well, we know the slope of the line here, the slope of the g of x is given by its determinant, g prime, figuring out its determinant as x goes to a. So, so this height should just be your slope, whatever g prime is, times that delta x, because that is the width. So your width is equal to, your width times your slope gives you, gives you the height. And exactly by the same argument, the height of this, of this function f of x right here, should be the derivative of f times delta x. That way your slope is the derivative of x, f, just like we expect it to be. But, but then we can see the limit of f divided by g, instead of trying to 0 over 0, you can just take the limit of the derivative of f times delta x, divided by the derivative of g times delta x. Those delta x's would cancel, and you would get the limit is just the derivative of f divided by the derivative of g as x goes to a. 
All this is saying is if you want to calculate some limit like this and you find out that it's zero over zero, what you can do is instead of calculating this limit, you calculate the limit as x goes to zero of the derivative of the top, which would be just cosine of x, divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is one, which then comes out to be as x goes to zero, cosine of zero is one, so you get one over one, which is one, just like we expected. Let's look at one more example of L'Hopital's rule in action. Consider the limit as x goes to one of x squared minus two x plus one all over 3x squared minus 3. Now again, if you were just to take the limit as x goes to 1, notice on top you'd have 1 minus 2 plus 1. That's going to 0. And on bottom, it's also going to 0. And so you get this indeterminate form, 0 over 0. We don't know where that's going to go to. But L'Hopital's rule tells us that when the top and bottom are both going to 0, then you can calculate the limit of f divided by g as just the limit of the derivative of f divided by the derivative of g. That is, this limit is the same as just the limit as x goes to 1 of the derivative of the top, 2x minus 2, divided by the derivative of the bottom, 6x. Now go ahead and take the limit as x goes to 1. Taking the limit as x goes to 1 now, we get on top 2 minus 2, which is 0, and on bottom 6 times 1, which is 1, or that is we do have just 0. Let's try one more example to see, see how this works. Let's do the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine of x minus 1 all over x. Taking the limit as x goes to 0, the top of this function is headed to 0 because cosine of 0 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. The bottom of the function is also going to 0. So we have 0 over 0. That tells us to use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule then says this limit will just be the limit of the derivative of the top. The derivative of cosine is minus sine of x over the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of x is 1. Now taking the limit as x goes to 0, we get 0. In general, whenever your function is some quotient of two functions, the top and bottom both going to 0, we can apply L'Hopital's rule.